In this video, I'm going to talk about doing niche research or niche research the right way. And when it comes to doing niche research the right way, of finding a niche that you want to start marketing to, the best thing is to start with what you know. So the easiest niches to find and dominate are the ones that you've got some experience in. And when you think about it, you know more than you think you do. And you've got more experience than you think you have. Everybody does. Everybody has done lots of different things throughout their lives. So you know a lot more than you think you do. And you've more experience than you think you have. Now, when it comes to finding niches, there are basically three broad categories that most niches are going to fall into. And those are work and business, hobbies, and personal life. And just about everything out there could fall into one of these three broad categories. Now, let's talk about work and business for a moment. Have you run a business in the past? Are you running one right now? Now, don't count your internet marketing business unless you've been running it for a long time and you've made a ton of money. You really don't want to start going into the IM niche until you really know what you're doing and you really know what you're talking about. If you don't have a business, have you had a job in the past? Are you working in a job right now and internet marketing is perhaps just a sideline venture for you? What jobs have you done in the past? Have you always been in the same career? Have you done other things as well? You know, that's something else that you need to think. Think back to every single job that you've ever done. Because you see, all businesses have certain things in common. They're all going to have similar things that people who are in them, running them, need to know. And each thing that all these businesses have in common is a potential niche and it's a potential broad niche that can cover lots of different businesses. That said, other things are unique to each business sector. Somebody running a manufacturing business like we see in this picture is going to have different challenges, different issues, different problems than someone who's running a service business like say a restaurant. So each of those is also a different potential niche. So what business sector or industry have you been involved with? Well, that's a niche because your business isn't the only one out there. There's going to be plenty of other competitors either close to you or in other parts of the country or in other parts of the world. So what do other business owners in your industry want, need, or should know about? Or, to put it another way, what have you wanted, needed, or wished you'd known about in the past? You know, things that you wish you knew, uh, that you had to find out the hard way, and now you know. Well, you know, that is a niche, that is a potential product, a potential information product to people who are in that niche. And the same holds true with a job. Every job you've ever done is a potential niche. Because other people who still do that job are a potential market. And so are their employers, because obviously if you employ someone in a job, you want them to do that job more efficiently, because obviously that increases your profitability. So think about it. What problems have you overcome that others might be facing right now in your job? For example, did you have to study for any industry certifications? And if you did, and if you did well on the exam, well, your notes and everything, well, they're a potential product right there, and you've got a potential niche of people who are studying for that certification who uh, would probably pay you for the inside information as to how to pass the exam and get the certifications. And what tools, equipment, software and so on would have made the job easier or would make the job easier if you're still doing it? That's another big market when you're marketing to people who are working in a job. Okay, let's talk about hobbies. 
because there are as many hobby niches as there are hobbies. You know, if you think about all the different hobbies that there are out there, and enthusiasts are often prepared to pay big bucks for the latest piece of equipment, or for learning how to do something that's related to their hobby. Or for information that will give them the inside edge, particularly if it's something like gaming or some sort of competitive sport. So inside information as to how to get the competitive edge over somebody else is going to be a big market. So ask yourself: Do you have a hobby? What is it? What have you just bought, accomplished, or would like to have? And What do you know about it now that you wished you'd known when you first took it up? Again, the hobby is a potential niche, and the information that you know that a lot of people who are starting out in it don't know is the foundation for a good potential product because you know about it, and therefore you can position yourself as an expert. And when it comes to the personal、uh, niche. Then personal life covers many, many topics and niches. Things like relationships, child rearing, overcoming adversity, things to do with your home. You know, it's practically unlimited. So again, ask yourself: What have you accomplished in your life? What obstacles did you overcome? What are you the most proud of? And how can your experiences benefit others? Who might be in a similar position, and you don't have to be all philosophical here. It can be something practical. It can be something about hanging wallpaper or、uh, how you painted a door. It doesn't have to be, you know, how you rescued your marriage or brought up your kids. It can be anything, any type of subject that's to do with your personal life is a potential niche. Now, once you've decided on a potential niche, and I recommend that you draw up a list of several potential niches. Ones which you could easily、um, go into because they're things that you know a lot about. Then you need to dive deeper into it. And first and foremost, you want to ask yourself: Is it one where people have money to spend? If it's not a niche where people have money to spend, then it's not worthwhile getting involved in it. Because after all, at the end of the day. You're doing this niche research to find a niche to sell to to make money. So if the people who are in that niche don't have money to spend, then it's not worth getting involved. Second thing is, can you deliver value for money? And that's very important because that's what people really want today. It's value for money, and if you can't deliver value for money. In this niche, then again, it's time to drop that one and think of something else. And finally, is there potential for more than one type of product? Or to put it another way, are you going to be able to build a sales funnel, or is there so much stuff being given away free in this niche that it's not worth the effort? Are there any competitors? If there are no competitors, you need to ask yourself why. There should be some competition because if there's no competition, it could well mean that, quite frankly, this isn't a niche that's worth selling to, or it could mean that you're the first person there, at which case it's a wide open field. But sadly, that sort of thing doesn't really exist anymore. What are your competitors selling? Can you come up with something that's better, cheaper? Or higher quality, and also I could have added here: if you do have competitors and they are selling stuff, is there affiliate programs that you could sign up to so that you could sell the same stuff for them? And finally, do you have what it takes to dominate this niche and become the go-to guy or go-to gal in it? And if it's something that you know about, then there's a good chance that you do. And you can establish yourself as an expert in this niche very, very quickly.